Hey, in this video, we are going to continue web development for absolute beginners, for people who know nothing. If you have not seen the prior three videos, I'll put the link in the description to this whole series and you'll wanna watch that first, but let's move forward. So the first skill you're gonna need as a web developer is the ability to build a layout, to basically look at a design, a graphic design of what a website should look like and then turn that into code. So let's learn how you do that. And we're also gonna introduce a few new tags along the way. Uh, so basically the tags that we're gonna use in this video are div tags. Div just means divider. I'll show you what that is here. Let's add a bunch of div tags. Let's do A, B, C, whoop, I hate it when it does that sometimes, and D. Gonna save that and you can see there's really nothing special about a div tag. It just basically is a content block. It's just uh, a divider there. Um, and a div tag actually is this box that spans as much space as it has from left to right, which is why they're stacking one on top of the other and not left to right. Because a div tag by default gets what's called a block display. So it's gonna fill out the whole content left to right. And then the next div tag by default goes below it. Now with CSS, we can change all that, but that's what a div tag is. So basically every little content block of your web page is a div tag. Uh, but after a while, developers realized, wow, if you go to the source code of a web page and just see millions of div tags, it's not very easy to read and understand what's going on. So we introduced what are called semantic tags. They're all basically div tags, but they have different names to allow us to read a web page easier as we're building it. So these tags are a header tag which you guessed it, is usually used for adding a header of a website. Uh, other tags are nav, section, footer. All these tags are divs, but they allow us to describe our web page in a way that's much easier to read and also a way that's much, much easier for search engines like Google to understand what the areas of content mean. So these are called, again, semantic tags, which means uh, they're a lot easier to read. <laughs> so we're gonna use div tags, we're gonna use semantic tags, and we're also gonna use those good old UL tags with the LI tags inside of it. You use that a lot in web development for your layouts, uh, but that's pretty much it when you're building layouts. Those are the tags that you use. So let's get into what a layout is and how you know which tags to use where. I'm going to go to a screenshot of bing.com here. So here's bing.com and I'm going to pull up some boxes that I drew around. If I had to turn this into a design, if, if you got given this screenshot and said, hey, build me a web page that is laid out like this, how would you do it? So if I had to build this layout, I'd start off with two tags, a header tag, which is this whole big piece up here, this whole top part. And then I do a section tag down here. Uh, that includes all this down here. So two tags at the very top level, right inside of the body tag that all the rest of the content will go into. Inside of the header tag, I would have a nav tag that would house the navigation. This right here would be a UL full of LIs for each link. So this is an unordered list, a UL, and then there's an LI and LI and LI and LI and so on. And over here, I'd probably do three div tags, a div here, a div here, and then a div here for the mobile menu kind of button. So that's the tags that you would use. Then here I would just have a div tag for this. And then here I would have a UL tag with a bunch of LIs in it. Because again, if you look at all these, they're really just a bunch of Un, it's an unordered list of items. They just have different backgrounds and different text titles, but they're really all the same thing. So that's the tags that I would use to lay out this entire website. And then down here, I would have three div tags as well, and I would layer them next to each other. From there on, when you have a good skill set of building layouts, all you have to learn is one bit at a time how to build the pieces of content that you want. How do I build a navigation and make links all go side by side like this? How do I build this little thing with a circle and the guy inside of it? How do I build a search bar and make it look like this? Those are all little bits of CSS that you learn along the way and nobody knows it all. And you have to Google all the time to figure out how you do what you, how to do what you want to do. And that's part of the fun of being a web developer is that you're always, always learning. So the layout that we're going to build for our web page is going to look like this. We're going to have a header tag. You guessed it. Inside we'll have a navigation and probably a big background image. And then we're going to have two sections and a footer. Section one will have three equal boxes. Section two will just be one big section. I don't know what we'll put in there, maybe some text or something. 
and then our footer section down here. And that's gonna be our website. So you can see it's really not gonna be a whole lot of tags to make the layout component of our design. So let's go over to our code. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a header tag. There's our header tag, and we'll wanna create two section tags. Again, I'm just typing the tag name and hitting tab. Another thing I can do is I can do section star two, and I just got two sections. So I'll call this triple section. Because if you'll remember, I'm going to actually have three squares inside of there later on. Lower section. There we go. And then let's make a footer tag. Footer. And I'll just add header here. So there we have it. That is our layout. And as you can see, they act just like divs. There's really no style here at all. So let's add a little bit of style. When I'm building a layout, the, the easiest way to start is to add background colors to every piece. Uh, so I'm gonna add a header style here. Let's make this background color black. There we go. And then let's do section. This background color will be white. And the font color then will probably need to become something else. So let's make color gray for now. Sure, that works. And then let's make the footer. It's going to have a background color black as well. So there's our basic section. From here on out, we'll finish up this video by learning about how to add spacing around your different elements, around your different tags. You can see that there's this kind of annoying gray spacing here. Um, and so we're definitely going to want to get rid of that. We're also going to want to control how big the header is and how big these sections are. So there's basically two ways you handle spacing in CSS. There are two properties that you would add. We'll, we'll go to the header here. Um, there is margin and there is padding. And between those two, you can add all the spacing that you need. So margin is pretty simple and padding is the same as well. Let's just add 20 pixel margin, margin, excuse me, around everything. And you can see that when I did that, I got 20 pixels uh, up here, 20 pixels here, 20 pixels there, and 20 pixels there. It didn't solve our problem, but we will get to that in a moment. Uh, but that's the easiest way to add something. Now, if I change this to padding, Padding adds that spacing inside of your box. So you can see my box went all the way to the edges, but now I have 20 pixels of spacing here, 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 and I also have it over here. You just can't tell because the text doesn't go that far. So it's margin and it's padding. And there's three ways that you can enter this. Let's go back to margin here. So you can enter it with one value and one value applies it to all sides of your box. You can also add two values. If you add two values, let's go 20 pixels and 40 pixels, then this goes to top and bottom, and this goes to left and right. You can see top and bottom have this smaller 20 pixels, and left and right have the 40 pixels. And then you can also add four values, which it works like a clock, top, right, bottom, and left. So think at the clock, you have the top of the clock, and then you have the right of the clock, and then you have the bottom of the clock, and then you have the left of the clock. So starts at the clock, we have our 20 pixels, 40 pixels, 10 pixels, and 50 pixels. So those are the three ways you can enter it. You can enter it with one value, two values, or four values. You can enter it with three values as well, but it's a little strange. Um, padding is the exact same way. You can see that it just all changed to the inside of my box now. 20, 40, 10 and 50. So padding works exactly like margin does. Uh, you can use one value, two values, or four values. So now to get rid of this little gray area here, by default, the body tag has margin and padding on it. And that might actually be different among browsers. So we wanna make sure we specify that. Let's make sure the margin is zero. And we're just gonna say zero and the padding is also zero. Let's hit save and ta-da, we have solved our problem with those ugly edge borders. No matter how much I stretch my web page out here, it always goes all the way to the edge, which is super nice. Excellent. So that's one thing that we've solved. Um, and then another thing that's very important to note is these don't all have to be in pixels. There's a lot of things called units in CSS. Uh, this padding could be 20 pixels. It could also be 20%, which is 20% of whatever space we have. You can see, whoa, 20% here is not very much because my window is not very wide. So 20% of my window is just a little bit, but 20% of the height of the window is a lot more. Uh, so percentage 
it is a really interesting concept. You can see as I get wider, that 20% becomes a lot bigger. So percentage is interesting. It's, it's a mixed bag. You don't always want to use it. There's about 10 different CSS units. Uh, for now, we're just going to stick to pixels. It's the easiest way to start. It's the easiest thing, thing to think about because a pixel is just a dot on your screen. So we've gotten that. So let's go ahead and add some padding here to the rest of our sections. And we've got this video done. Let's go over here to the section. Let's add padding. Let's just add a padding of 20 pixels all around. 20 pixels there. And on the footer, 20 pixels. Although that looks a little bit much. On the footer, let's add maybe 10 pixels and then 20 pixels. So the top and bottom will be a little bit less, but the left and right have that larger. And I'm zoomed in here. This is the actual size of my web page. if I zoom out to 100%. Uh, so I'm zoomed in so it looks a little bigger. That's actually what our sections look like. So that's your basic CSS layout stuff. You've, you've got your semantic tags and you've got your boxes and you're just going to add margin and padding to get them to lay out the way that you want to. In the next video, we'll deal with the navigation and we'll also deal with this little triple section here.